given that APEC's primary purpose is to promote free trade, this has to be seen as something of a success. In the end, the 11 countries still negotiating the biggest free trade deal the region has ever seen weren't able to ratify the Trans-Pacific Partnership at the APEC leaders' meeting. But still they made huge strides towards sealing a pact that many thought was dead and buried after Donald Trump pulled the U.S. out of the TPP in January. The ministers issued a joint statement affirming that countries have agreed on the core elements of this agreement in the direction of keeping the content of the original TPP agreement, while allowing member countries to temporarily suspend a number of obligations. So work still to be done, but better than a rushed deal. There are lots of areas where if you rush to agree, high standards will be sacrificed. But if you insist on high standards, it can take a long time or some countries might drop out. So all 11 countries are on board and this will send out a very strong message to the U.S. and other countries in the region. The TPP is not the only big trade deal in the works. Twelve APEC members, including China, Japan, South Korea and the ASEAN countries, are working toward concluding another ambitious free trade agreement, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Speaking Friday, Trump seemed to accuse several fellow APEC members of unfair trade practices and made it clear he opposes multi-nation deals. But APEC's other leaders have made it equally clear they won't let the U.S. obstruct or derail their goal of greater regional integration. Ryan Meltzer, CGTN, Da Nang, Vietnam.